All right, guys, it's been a while since we've done an update. I wanted to kind of give you an update on what's going on here. Uh, number one, you can see that the lettuces that we dropped in out of the uh, stuff from the uh, grocery store have been growing well. In fact, we need to start harvesting more of the lettuce. I've been harvesting a little bit of the outer leaves uh, with our salads throughout the weeks. For those that are new to this series, you can go back and watch it in the beginning. The reason it kind of looks funny with lights is because those are... LED grow lights because this is an in indoor system. Uh, the what do you call it? The watercress has pretty much taken off like weeds, which is what you'd expect. So this, I'm gonna go around the back and we'll talk about this here in just a second. Yeah, that's all grown since we installed this. <laughs> anyway, um, one of the really great finds I found were these golden beets um, in the uh, produce section at the supermarket. And these are little baby beets, they're only about that big, and they're like a kind of a gourmet thing. And if you look at them, this is uh, this is golden chard. And if you look at the golden beets, and this is just beginning to grow back, it's a very, very similar plant. In fact, my buddy was just over here, that's a golden beet right there. And again, the color is a little off because of uh, the lights, but my buddy was convinced, that can't possibly be, you know, uh, a beet. It looks like Swiss chard. Well, it's a it's a beet and look at the roots on it in just a couple uh, days since it's been in there so this is starting to grow so this will grow into a great big mighty little beet root and uh, once we're done with our winter experimentation all of this stuff you see how easy that comes out and goes back in all this stuff can just be lifted out and replanted into outdoor systems whether ebb and flow or wicking beds it doesn't matter uh, here's the garlic remember all the garlic we put in look at the and this is the point here I was talking about. So you see how that is? These really need to be cut and have something done with them. I just did some acorn squash soup last night. I'll probably have it for lunch today, so I'll probably come out here and cut some of these and chop these up, and I'll use them like chives on top of that soup. Again, look at the size of this lettuce since we put it in. And really, I'm, you can see it's almost ready to start going to seed. I've let this go that long just to show you what happens when you drop lettuce into one of these beds. You can see the celery cores I put in, how they're dark green now. And they're really beginning to set up new growth. And, you know, these lights are okay for seed starting and all. But honestly, and I'll show you that in a second. If you're starting seeds with these lights right here, you want them down about that close to the plant. So we're only getting so much light in here. Remember, I, I didn't build this so that everybody would go out and start building indoor ones. If you want to build an indoor one, I suggest stepping up to like a couple 300 watt high power LEDs and kind of putting them on a way where you can drop them down or there's a, a, a technology that actually will take your grow light and very slowly move it back and forth on a track so that all the plants get full exposure to the light and you just run your light duration longer and that's cheaper than a two light system so if you're going to be indoors I'd go higher end on your lights I just used what I had to do this as a teaching aid and my real hope is to see systems like this built outdoors in the spring and in the winter you just shut them down but let me show you what I mean. So this is some mescaline mix that I made up. A whole bunch of different things. You see all this stuff right under that light. You can see how close that light is. There's my hand in there. So it's a little bit less than my hand's width. And you can see as you move out to the edge here, everybody crying. Look at these guys here like, ah, we're dying. Please give us light. Uh, I'm just not putting another light in here just for that. So, you know, it's just a good, again, a teaching tool. You can see that focused light there. How really robust those little plants are down in there. So. There you go. It would probably be better to grow microgreens on both of these wicking beds. But I just wanted, again, to give you the best educational experience that I could with this. But check out the microgreens under the T5 lights. I mean, honestly, these are getting too big. These are getting really kind of big for microgreens. And you see I've eaten all this. And it's probably about time to uh, take whatever we can get for the next couple days. Because, man, these are good thrown in the squash soup as well. Uh, and so are the radishes. The radishes are great, but you, when you start to get microgreens up to this size, you're going past, see how that is getting that next leaf on there? And they start to get tougher. See that next leaf? Let's see. Those are still good, but I mean, you got a couple more days in them and they're going to be too big. So I'll do a big harvest and wash and clean. And then I'll just cut everything else out and I'll take it out to the birds. And I'll, I'll do a little tilling here, and we'll just replant it with the same mix. And you can see if I was doing it on both sides, it could be growing out one side. And then by the time you're getting like this, this one's already planted. And you could do that with microgreens. You can easily add microgreens into a system like this, even if you're doing a lot more of the big beds. You know, they can just be out like wings on the end. 
But kind of what I see is like the easiest template. Those are eight foot four by four supports there. You move that to the rear, you do two big ones on the back. You put two four by fours up here, you do two big ones on the front, you have access in between them so you can access your fish. And then you go straight up with eight foot four by fours, build yourself a little pergola. You got a 64 square foot system with four 50 gallon beds. And again, you can work in some of these smaller beds and what have you. And outside, I mean, that'd be a pretty solid system. If you wanted to with eight foot tall, eight by eight by eight, you could probably go to like a greenhouse company like uh, Farm Tech or Greenhouse Megastore and get custom fit uh, greenhouse plastic designed to go over that 64 square foot area. So even if you expanded outside of it, during the winter, you would just shut that external position down and fall back into that 64 square feet, which would be very easy to heat. Uh, and I would probably go a little bit bigger than that so you have room to be in there, but kind of get the point. The smaller the area you're heating, the less heating you have to do. But I think for most folks, a system like this outdoors, you just run it until your first heavy frost, shut it off, um, and then you know harvest your fish or have a place to overwinter fish if you need to. And uh, just start it back up in spring. And remember, we can do it fishless. If we don't want fish, we can just throw you know fertility right in there and, and build up plenty of fertility. And with wicking beds, it becomes you know almost meaningless because we can fertilize, etc. our wicking beds. So that's our update. I hope you're enjoying it. And uh, if you get a chance, get on up to Liberty Forum in New Hampshire. I'll be doing three talks, actually four talks up there. But one of them will be on aquaponics and building these systems.